Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today we're making little baskets out of lavender stalks. The bees are buzzing away in the lavender. It's a perfect time to be picking. The sun hasn't been up for too long, so the dew has dried, but it hasn't evaporated all the essential oils yet. And I'm starting my annual lavender harvest to make sure I've got dried flowers to use and soaps and hair vinegars and lavender sachets and all sorts of nice things like that. Don't worry, I've left plenty for the bees. Now, this video isn't really about harvesting the lavender. That's pretty straightforward. I can either leave it in the basket to dry or I can hang it up until I can rub these flower petals off. Mostly today, though, I want to look at things that we can do with these lovely long leftover stalks. Once your lavender is dry, getting the flowers off the top really is just a case of rubbing it between your hands. And that's always oh, quite a nice thing to do in its own right. If, like me, you love the smell of lavender, then the way the kitchen smells afterwards is just fantastic. I tend to work on a cloth because I think it's easier to shake all the little flower buds when they're done. Now, what you're left with are these twiggy bits with quite a lot of little spiky ends on the top. They've got, they've got quite a lot of scent in their own right still, and it's such a shame to use them. If you still use a wood-burning stove or an open fire, of course you can use them for kindling. It is possible to use single stalks a little bit like joss sticks, but most of us don't tend to do a lot of that these days. So today I'm going to use them as the coil in, the core, in a little coil basket. The big problem though that you'll find straight away is that by themselves lavender stalks are very, very brittle. So the first thing we have to do is put some moisture back into those so that they'll bend around a curve without kinking and breaking. So all I'm going to do, I'll just show you a little bit of it more before I set the rest of my batch up, find the bits I haven't actually finished yet. Tin of lukewarm water, pop your stalks in, give them half an hour to two hours, so maybe an hour. You don't want it to be so long that they're really soggy. You don't want it to be so short that the moisture hasn't got properly into the stalks. And then I'm going to wrap them in a cloth and I'm going to leave them for another hour or so. That's called mellowing. You do it a lot with things like um, basketry willow. And that just lets everything equalise, lets them get nice and bendy, but not too wet. I'll set up some of the rest of these and we'll come back to that in a moment. I should mention it's worth only putting on to soak as much material as you'll think you'll use in one session. Now for me, that's about what I can fit my hands around. Much more than that, and I'll probably get distracted by other jobs. And the vast majority of basketry material doesn't benefit from multiple soakings. You might get away with it twice, but much more than that, quite often, you're actually increasing the brittleness, not fixing it. So make, you know, make sure you've soaked enough to have a good session. But you can always soak more. If you get part way into it and you think, actually, I'm going to be quite happy working for quite a while today, put another batch on. So just a handful. That still needs another half hour. Time for a cup of tea. We'll come back to it. These have had probably actually not quite an hour, maybe three quarters of an hour. If I fish one out, let's get one in the middle. Remember how easily the first one broke. Now this now should, it's still kinking but there's a lot more bend to it and it's not so immediately brittle. That's what we're after. If I used it straight away, it would be dripping with water and not necessarily equalised throughout the stalks, even after the soaking. So I'm just going to pop them on a cloth, fold it up. It doesn't matter if it's a damp cloth. Give that another 20 minutes or so, half an hour, while I get everything else together. And this is a very, very simple project today. And my natural inclination is to use something like um, cord as you go, you know, nettle or bramble or flax or something like that. But one of the comments I often get with my videos is people saying, I'd love to try that, but I don't have those materials growing nearby. So today I'm very carefully using things that are easy to get. 
And all you're gonna need is some string. Any string will do. This is dishcloth cotton, sort of thing you'd knit washing up cloths with. And I've just chosen a colour that I think is sort of lavender evocative, a nice sort of sea greeny colour. You're going to need a big needle. This is a great big darning needle. I'll do a close up of that in a second. And a probably pair of scissors. That's all you're going to need. So string, big needle, doesn't have to be any particular type, but not too sharp generally. Scissors of some form. That's all there is to it. I think we can get started on this. Now we're going to do a very simple quill basket today. I'm aware that some of you trying this won't have done any sort of basketry before, so I'm going to keep it really simple. We're going to use smallish bundles and it's up to you how thick they are, but I reckon in total something that's about half to as thick as the thickness of your finger. And as we use it, we're going to put a very slight twist on it. That's just going to help hold things together. Now, we've already mentioned all these little spiky, sticky out bits. That's actually going to be a feature of this basket. We're not trying to hide that. But at the same time, we want things to hold together reasonably well. So the start of the basket is quite important. And what we're going to do is arrange the first little bundle so that we get a taper towards the end. I know at the moment that's frilling out, but we want that to really coil down into a nice pointy end. I've set up my first needle and thread with about two arm spans of thread. That's usually manageable. You want a long enough bit that you're not forever re-threading a needle, but not so much so that it's really, really irritating. And the first thing we're going to do, let me just move this out of the way so you've got a plainer background behind. I think that would be easier. Is we're going to bind the very end of the um, core material. So I'm going to lay my thread against it, so, so pointing as if it's coming out of the top, and then I'm just going to wind. I'm just going to wind back on itself fairly tightly. Because the material was dried first, it will have done most of its shrinking. But if you don't pull your thread tight, you might get gaps later when it finishes drying out. Now, you can wrap smoothly, but I'm want to keep this rustic looking. So I'm allowing little tiny gaps to hold up. And you want to do this for, again, probably about the length of a finger. Just keep wrapping it round. The core always needs a really good starting point. Now, when you've got a bit about the length of a finger, start at the end and start coiling it up on itself. And you might find you can go around. That's perfect, pretty much exactly what I wanted. And now we're just going to use the needle to sew this together. Doesn't really matter whether you work from the top going down or the bottom coming up, it's whatever's comfortable for you. Watch out for lavender socks. And if you get any bits that stick out and are really annoying, just grab your scissors and clip them off. It's worth taking your time at the very start to make sure that you get a tidy middle. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way around back up through the middle. Take your time with it. It's worth taking a moment or two over this first bit to get it just the way you want it. I'm probably going to end up with a tiny little hole in the middle of mine, maybe. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. If you weren't happy with that, we'll just tighten it all up, you know, rearrange it until you're comfortable. All right, now then, how do I want to do this? For me, I think I want to work going in this direction, which is slightly 
opposite to the way I'm going at the moment. So that's easy to correct. You'll probably have worked out by the time you've set up the middle how you want to to progress. Sorry, I'm aware that's waving in and out of shot. Try that again. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change to the direction that I'm comfortable in. So for me, I want to work that way. You work whichever way you're comfortable in. And the way this particular bass is going to work is we're going to go all the way around the core material. So taking a whole turn on it. And then you're going to come back through the layer below. Let me turn around again so I can see that you can see what's going on. Pull it nice and tight. I will do some close-ups of this in different angles in a minute. So all the way around the core material, so over the top, underneath, all the way around, and then back through the core. And what this is doing, that's binding this together. And if you need to, now and then put the tiniest little twist in it, that's going to help it go around corners and bind together. All the way around, so over the top, through the middle, all the way around. There are lots of stitches you can use. This one's just a very easy one. And through into the middle. Now one more stitch and we'll be all the way around once. And at that point, I'll change camera angles and we'll look at how to continue. So all the way around once. Back into the middle. Now as you go along, you're going to notice that all of your lavender stalks are going to finish at different points, which means we need to add in new material quite gradually. And because we started at the spiky ends, we're going to add material from the spiky end. And all we're going to do is lay in new bits every now and then, and then give it a little twist just to hold it together. And then keep going. We're going to do our going all the way around. So it's a complete twist. So over the top, up the gap, finish going all the way around. I suppose it's really a turn and a half if you really count it. And then we're going to keep sewing. Now, in my case, I'm coming up from underneath, but it really doesn't matter if you're working from the top going down. Now, that's where we started at the very middle. And we had been coming right up through the hole in the bottom. But now that we're coming up onto the second round, I want to come up between the layers. So just pull that nice and tight. And it really is quite important that pulling things nice and tight. All the way around. And in my case, I'm leaving a little gap. You can cover quite strongly with the string but I do want the lavender and the little spiky bits to stick out and then through the gap in between. What you'll find as you go along is that as well as getting a feel for how to work around these long stalks it can feel a little awkward at first. It doesn't really matter if you want to twist the whole basket actually maybe that's a better technique for some of you. That worked. That as you progress, you'll soon work out what sort of spacing is going to work nicely for you. And the bits where that was the long stitch went all the way around, that was the wrap stitch. Well, those wrap stitches provide the perfect point for your needle to come up through the middle. And don't forget to pull it tight and don't forget to periodically give it a little twist just to bind it all together. A stitch or two later, I realised I was fighting unnecessarily with this. I'd been working this direction, so every time I went over things, my arm was getting tangled on the long stalks. So just by swapping to the other side, it's suddenly easier for me to put the slight twist on with my non-dominant hand, wrap 
all the way around the working bit and get that needle through. Don't ever be afraid to rearrange your working position to suit both your comfort levels and the material in hand. Every single basket's a bit different. The last one I did, I was quite happy working that direction, this one, this line round. See how it goes. Adding in a new thread doesn't have to be complicated. All I did was, this is the new one, I laid it down the core of the basket for a few stitches. And as soon as the old one started to run out, that's this one, they swap places. So I've just swapped them over now. That's the old thread that now goes back into the core. And the new one, you carry on with. And as long as you're relatively careful for the first couple of stitches, that's as good a way as any to start off a new thread. Don't forget to keep pulling things tight. Don't forget to keep adjusting the thickness. Just dropped the piece I was about to put in. There it is. So laying in new bits really is just a case of laying it over the top, twisting all the way around. Don't forget to pull things tight. Don't forget to put a little half twist on things occasionally. Give yourself permission to move your hands and the work around as much as you need to. I think people who are new to basketry and cordage sometimes feel that they've got to keep the same working position all the time. And actually, you can be really mobile about this. What's working for me now this minute might not be the best working position for me in half an hour when the basket gets a little bit bigger. So just take your time with it, allow it to develop comfortably. I'm not being too worried about my spacing. It's, it's relatively even, I'm getting quite a nice little gap, but I'm not too worried. It's a rustic little basket and I've never been one of these people who expects my little handmade baskets made out of forage materials to look like something mass produced or even made by somebody who spent their entire working lives getting really, really perfect at it. I like those little imperfections. And I think probably that's the spacing that the rest of this will carry on at now. It always takes a little while in the middle to settle down. But that spacing of what, three or four millimetres? That looks, that looks pretty good to me. I've been happy working for probably half an hour or so now and I have to say I am getting a slightly sore bit on my finger where I keep yanking against the thread so do watch out for that as you go. However, I've got to the point where I think I want to start shaping my basket. Up to this point I've just been quietly working round and round in circles. I want a very slight curve to this so all I'm going to do is just bear that in mind as I take the next few rounds into consideration. You really don't have to overthink this, just remember that I want this next layer to come up just a morsel higher than the one before. Just guide that strand to pretty much end up where I want it to be. So if I turn that round completely so you can see the profile. You can see it's essentially flat at the moment, but this edge is just now, just the tiniest bit up. You can even do it as you go along just by just by bending it before the next round sets it into place. So just keep tweaking it and then as I finish every two or three inches I'll go along and I'll just wiggle it with my fingers just to put that very slight curve onto it and keep going. That's coming along quite well now. 
brought it out to show the bees how it's coming along. <laughs> After the slightly shallow start, I've allowed the sides to come up much more steeply. And, do you know, I'm not going to make it too much bigger than this. When I set out with this this morning, I had in mind almost a shallow tray. And because this has decided to be more of a little bowl shape, it actually feels a nice size as it is. So I'm going to do just a tiny bit more and then I'll finish off. Now, the exact size and shape of anything like this is very much up to your imagination, as are the stitches. There are so many possible stitches you can use with this sort of basket. For this particular one, I've gone round once in the loop. There's nothing to stop you going around two or three times before the stitch. You can use a sort of blanket stitch. There's all sorts of different ways to attach it, but I'm quite happy with that so far. One thing I will need to do though is finish off the ends neatly. There's a couple of different approaches to that. I could just stop adding things in and as we get near to the end of this it means the coil will get smaller and smaller and it'll taper in very very gradually. Mm, I don't know whether I'm going to be that precise about this. The other way I might finish this one is to cut the ends off quite, quite sharply with the scissors and then work two or three very tight stitches to make almost like a little um, feature out of the end. I think I might do that today. So a couple more stitches and then we will finish off. No, I think that works. I'm going to leave it there for me. So I took a couple of tight stitches just as we had before. Then I went round the core maybe three times round the second row twice so that's pulled in really tightly now i'm just going to weave the ends in so literally just wiggle the needle back and forth a couple of times till it's well anchored and i can clip the tail off and then i think we'll go and have a look at it out in the lavender patch and there we are all done very little very cute that just used that handful of lavender and that's going to look very nice with a few sprigs of lavender on my dressing table go on get outside Pick some lavender or some long grasses and make yourself a little basket this weekend.